come on in the room. Come on in the room. We have folks that are tuning in. New Life Church of God. Palmetto, Louisiana is our home base. As you are entering in at the 10 o'clock hour on this fourth Sunday in the month of July, we welcome you. Even as we join in together, uh, summertime is coming to a close, literally, as we're kind of transitioning. A lot of focus is on getting ready for school. We're just coming out of a week, last week, of camp meeting here at the Ministry and Retreat Center, uh, Beyond the Encounter, and we are encouraged to continue to lift Jesus up. That's what we're doing in our worship services today. It's all about Jesus as we have a fresh encounter, new, refreshing for us in our life's experiences, even as we move forward. And so I'm so glad that you've tuned in today. Uh, today's message is coming from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 17, as we lift up the power, life transforming, working of Jesus Christ. So come and worship with us. Just don't view, but worship with us, pray with us, celebrate with us, and proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with us. So you're welcome to come into our sanctuary. The Lord bless you. Come on in the house. For he is good, his mercies endure forever. 
We welcome you. We do life together. We're all doing life and we're all working through our individual circumstances and schedules and thoughts and experiences in life. And we're saying that Jesus Christ fits it all. He fits into our lives. No matter how young we may be, no matter how old we may be, he fits perfectly into our lives, into our hearts. My prayer is that we would open our hearts unto the Lord today. Let's whisper a prayer this morning as we gather to worship. Father, we whisper a prayer this morning. Ah, we hear the call to worship this morning, oh God, ah, to worship you, our creator, the one that sustains us, the one that sees us through our life's experiences and welcomes the invitation into our hearts, come into our hearts as we worship you, oh Lord, you are of great value and we want it to be lived out in a way that you are the most important important person to us. It's all about you. So may our worship be pleasing unto you, Lord God. Refresh us even in our worship. Inspire us. And yes, Lord, even speak to us today that uh, your word may be lived out in a very powerful way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, it was but just a week ago that we assembled ourselves in this place for our closing services of our 2023 camp meeting, and we were mindful to watch the words that come out of our mouth. Oh my, oh my. Well, this is an opportunity for us to really say the right things as we worship the King of Kings, as we say, even I will enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts in my mouth, even as we say that in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. And so the reading of our scripture this morning from the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verses 21 through 24, is we are mindful of worship. Uh, even as, uh, again, chapter 4 of this, of, of the Gospel of John is what uh, our facilitators, our speakers, work through the entirety of our, uh, of our camp meeting. Uh, John chapter 4, verse 21. If you would stand with me as you're physically able, we welcome you to do so for our worship time that even starts with our reading of the scriptures. Jesus declared, believe in me, woman. A time is coming when, we, when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and and in truth. Thanks be to God. And Sister Susan comes to lead us, not to entertain us, not to sing for us, but to lead us in our worship. I will enter his gate, as the psalm says, with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. I will say, this is the day the Lord has made. Then we will proclaim that in the name of Jesus, we have victory. Can you take victory? Are you going to choke for victory? Victory is right there. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Good morning. In the name of Jesus. We will walk in giving you your praise for all you have done. Doing and we are doing our lives. So let's go to him. And in the name of Jesus, we pray and give God
going to believe it, Lord God. We're going to receive it, Lord God. And the more and more word that we have, Lord God, to enlighten us and to bless us, and we'll step out in faith. Minister to the needs of the families today, oh God. Father, may they be mindful that you have them. May they be mindful, Lord God, that your grace is available for them, Lord God. Work it out. Work things together for good as they acknowledge you, Lord God. As families are gathered together, as families are praying, Lord God. I thank you for a great moving, Lord God, in the atmosphere and in the environments of their lives, oh God. I thank you for that. When there is sickness, Lord God, we release our faith, saying, be healed. Be healed, near and far, oh God, by the stripes that Jesus bore on his back. We are healed. We have access to healing. So when there is sickness, there is not healing, oh God. We need to minister to needs, oh God. For the darkness that envelops our communities, the darkness that envelops the Lord God, even our neighborhoods, we proclaim the light of Jesus to shine, to shine bright, to shine bright, to shine bright, Lord God. Depression has to cease, has to flee, Lord God. Darkness, Lord God, is, is cast aside, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this great light, oh God. And Father, you know that there are circumstances that burden us. Circumstances involving friends and loved ones, family members that have not accepted you, Jesus, as Lord and Savior. Mm. Father, may there be a spiritual awakening. May there be a drawing, Lord God, to manifest itself in great and powerful ways, oh God. And so we do battle, Lord God, against the gates of hell today. Taking back all that you have stolen from our loved ones and our family members and our friends, oh God. And even our enemies, we pray for our enemies, salvation, oh God. Oh Lord God, may there be a great move in the spirit realm in regards to what you are doing and who you are. We worship you, Lord God. Even as we see, we are seated, oh God. Posture of worship, even with hands open to receive worship, Lord God, even with hands raised, Lord God, to worship, Lord God, with, my, with hearts, Lord God, and kind of filled with your spirit, oh God. May our hearts, Lord God, be filled with your spirit, Jesus. May every heart under the sound of my voice be filled with you, Jesus. And there's even the whispering of Jesus. Jesus.
Can you say Jesus? Jesus. Can Jesus come on your mouth? Can you say Jesus? Jesus. 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 Uh, their lives, mouths, who cannot say Jesus. I want you to know that. I want you to know that. There are mouths in this room that could not say Jesus. Ah, but the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ is in here. Oh, watch it, watch it, watch it. The Lord's be glorified. Amen. The Lord be glorified. When we are gathered in his name, when we are gathered in his presence, he'll show up. He'll show up. Amen. And we refuse to miss our blessings for this day. July 23rd in the year 2023. Amen, amen, as we celebrate the name of Jesus. Extending the warmest of welcomes to you on this uh, Sunday. Maybe you didn't need extra warmth today, but again, just warmth that you can feel in your hearts. Warmth in, warmth in your hearts. May you feel that. It's available unto you. Indeed, Jesus is the centerpiece. He's the audience today. You're not the audience. Those of you who are viewing online, you're not the audience. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jesus is the audience for today, and we bless the name of Jesus today. As we are joined together, good to have each and every one of you here, uh, even as we are uh, just believing and trusting in the name of Jesus. We've come through uh, this week, kind of recovery week from camp meeting. The Lord is good indeed. Just giving just a little bit of, of updates, even as we join together. No. Uh, Brother David and Sister Tanya, Tanner, Sister Sylvia Tanner are watching this morning. Brother David is making good recovery from his knee replacement surgery. Uh, still a lot of pain there. Uh, but again, we just continue to believe and to trust in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Tuesday, have a chance to visit Hurtley uh, Andrews, and uh, he's just giving thanks to God. It's about God who has brought him oh, yeah. through two weeks ago. He yes, was in Lord. death's door. That's going on the middle lane. Kidneys had shut down. But that same day, after we prayed, y'all, I got a call from his wife that afternoon. The nurse called and said, ma'am, you must have gone to church today. And Rita, who works seven days a week, said, I had to take off and go to church today. She said, I surely did. Well, we just want you to know that your husband has awakened. He's come off of the ventilator. His kidneys are starting to work again. And uh, God is still in it. So he's looking to be moved to a rehabilitation hospital to regain his strength and mobility. But again, out of his mouth, it's all God. Yes. God who has brought him through. Thanks be to God. Well, we're going to ready ourselves for, again, more good news that comes from the word of the Lord. First Timothy chapter 1, our text of scripture will come from. Sister Susan will come lead us again an opportunity to praise him. Blessed Savior, he's worthy of our praise. As we gather and ready ourselves to conversate again about the power of Jesus.
Jesus came into this world to save sinners, of whom I'm the worst. Yes. But for this very reason, I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe on him and receive eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immoral, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of our Lord this morning. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 As we've come in the residual of our annual camp meeting, our annual personal local revival, if you will, to say that we have truly been blessed indeed, that 
The words of our mouths are being changed. The words of our mouths are being changed. Even as we had our morning coffee, our afternoon coffee, or our small tea in the morning, rather than rehearsing those life's problems and those life's issues, and looking through our windows with a gaze that is just like a deer stare because we are rehearsing those issues and circumstances and injustices uh, that we may find ourselves in. We're mindful that our words have changed, that we can praise the Lord, that we can exalt him, that we know that Jesus loves us in such a special way. And so we're mindful of that even as we uh, were reminded and ministered to and poured into doing our camp meeting service. And then there were a few of you, a few of us that attended camp meeting in Pollock this past Friday and were blessed by the word that was there. Uh, the Lord is good and his mercies continue to endure uh, even throughout today. Ah, scripture says his mercies are new every morning. Mercies, mercies, not getting what we deserve. Mercy. Not getting what we deserve. The Apostle Paul is caught up in the mercies of God in our text of Scripture, even as he rehearses, rehearses, rehearses the fact that he was a bad a sinner. I made that up. A bad a sinner than any of us who are, were, could be. He was the chief of sinners. And there was none like him. And so uh, he rehearsed that. And so even as we live our life's experiences, no matter what they have been, in. We believe in God's word that elevates our lives, that speaks into our lives, and ministers unto our lives. And the Apostle Paul uh, shares it clearly there, uh, even uh, in, 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 a, in the second epistle of Timothy. Uh, he says, I know in whom I have believed in and am persuaded that he's able to keep that that I committed unto him against that day. For those of you who have committed your lives to Jesus Christ, Know that our God is able to keep that commitment through the storms, through the hardships, through the life's experiences that comes with injustices and unfairness that may abound and may amount in various seasons of our lives. May we be fully persuaded that the confession that we have made to honor, to serve Jesus Christ, he's able to keep that. And so may everything around us recognize that um, that the Lord Jesus Christ reigns and everything else has to crumble. All of the weapons that the enemy has faced, has confronted us with, those weapons have to crumble. But we know that there's nothing else that we can truly depend upon in life other than Jesus Christ. We can depend upon his word and his transformational power. The living presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in a surrendered life will create a new person. Will create a new person. The living presence of the Lord Jesus Christ in a surrendered life, in a life that has been surrendered, yielded unto him, not my way, not my desires, not my motives, but I'm surrendering unto you. As we sing that chorus, he is Lord. He is Lord. He is my Lord. That speaks to that surrendered life. We recognize that uh, Jesus can do something that no diet can do. Jesus can do something that no weight room can do. No six pack or eight pack can do. I'm taking, talking about push ups right now, but if you want to take another six pack, I'm telling you, Jesus can do what no other six pack can do. What no other aging cream, anti aging cream can do. Jesus can do what no bank account can do. What no beautician can do. What no change of an address can do. Sometimes we think if we can just move. We can just move away from where I am. Everything will be okay. I'm telling you, it don't work like that. Some of us have moved four and five times, and our problems beat us to the address we were moving to. Oh, my. But Jesus, a life-transforming power of Jesus, can do for us what none other can do. 
And so we want that word to be sown within our lives and in our hearts. We want to be discipled in a way and in a manner that that becomes priority. That becomes the center focus unto us. Whether it's a morning cup of coffee or whether it's an evening sip of water, that Jesus can become our all in all. The Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. More than a good feeling has come. Oh, I know some of us have enjoyed a good feeling today in our worship. But I want you to know that our Lord brings more than just a good feeling to our tables, the tables of our lives. Uh, there is a real change that we can believe in that can happen through a daily surrendered life to Jesus Christ. In our text of scripture, the Apostle Paul gives a personal account of his transformed life. Even as we see in verses 13 through verse 15, he gives a personal account of his transformed life. He said, even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, Sounds like a person of anger issues. He, say, he, he says, even though I was all of this, I was shown mercy. Mercy, again, not getting what you deserve. I was shown mercy, he says, because I acted in ignorance. I had acted in unbelief. So many of our actions are in unbelief. Unbelief, how we respond to those circumstances and to those persons in our lives We've acted in unbelief. And he uh, continues on in verse 14. The grace of our Lord of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Jesus Christ. So much was poured out unto him, he says. Paul's a different man now because of who he believed in. He believed in Jesus Christ. He places himself even at the top of the list of sinners. A lot of times we like to downplay our lives, our former lives and whatever. He doesn't downplay it. It becomes part of his testimony. Part of what the world can hear and to see. This was a man, this was a man who was not righteous all of his life. He was even serving in the temple courts. He was a, a, a man in the religious uh, realm of things. Uh, but yet he was the cheapest of sinners, he says. And so even as we can think about some sinners in our lives and around us, Paul says, I'm the chief among them all. And he goes on to verse, verse 16 in our text of scripture. Uh, but for that very reason, I was shown mercy. So that in me, and he says it again, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his unlimited patience and an example for those who believe on him and receive his eternal life. And so Paul's transformed life now serves as an, as an example to others of this great power. This great power that's available in Jesus Christ. And the Apostle Paul speaks of a great patience that Jesus has for him. Ah, great patience. Sounds like many of our stories personally. The patience that the Lord has had with our lives. Patiently, patiently waiting. We sing that hymn, that hymn is sung, patiently waiting for me. That patience that is there, that's found in the Lord Jesus Christ. That patience, let me just say this until you can hear me, until your eyes can be on me. That great patience that he's had for us. The Lord Jesus must have patience for the world around us must have a lot of patience for all of the hellacious behaviors from the top of the status to the bottom of the status. Must have a lot of patience. Patiently waiting for us. The Lord is patiently waiting for you. Apostle Paul says, again, there was great patience. Patiently waiting. But when there was the encounter that he had with the Lord Jesus Christ on the Damascus road, there was a time that his spiritual eyes had to be opened. Patience no longer was what was needed. 
Paul speaks of the patience that Jesus has had with him. Those of you who are gathered under the sound of my voice, or even viewing this morning, can think and to recognize and to relate to the patience that the Lord has truly had with you. Oh, yeah. Even when we knew better, he was still patient. Even when we ignored him, he was patient. to be moved into the patience that our Lord has had for us. But never be mistaken that Jesus comes to a surrendered life with transformational power. Again, that's part of our view. That's part of our mission. That's part of our, our statement of who we are as a local congregation. That transformational power, that cataclysmic change, that is a, it's a caterpillar one moment and now it's a butterfly. A transformation, cataclysmic change. And I want to remind us today about what that wonderful transformational power that is still available for us today. Cataclysmic change. I don't care who you are. I don't care how you have lived. I don't care how bad you think you are. I don't care how much you think you have messed up in life. The power that comes with Jesus Christ into a life that is surrendered. All things can become new. So friends, don't give in to the feelings of the popular culture where you feel that you just have to accept the behavioral patterns of what everybody else is doing. You know, everybody else is doing this. Everybody else is living this way. Everybody else lies. Everybody else cheats. Everybody else gets high. Everybody else sleeps around. Everybody else is disobedient to their parents. Everybody else blows off school. Everybody else is selfish and thinks only of themselves. Everybody else always gets angry. I stand before you and say, oh, no, not so. If that's your everybody, you need to get your everybody eyes on Jesus Christ. You need to get your eyes on Jesus if you have bought into that lie from the pit of hell that everybody else is living that way. Everybody else is living in sin and rebellion to God. Get your eyes off of everybody else. Get your eyes on Jesus Christ. Because you know what? Everybody is not like that. Everybody else is not living in blatant open sin. Everybody else has not bowed unto Baal like we think they have. Everybody else has not done that. There are those who are committed to learning to walk in the Spirit, to live in the Spirit. They are committed to learning how to live a life of joy, of peace, and of love, and patience. And kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self control. Where there is that surrendered life to recognize I've missed it. I'm the chiefest of sinners. My righteousness, righteousness is but filthy rags. Those of us who are trying to walk around with our own righteousness. Everybody else can see feel but us. It's, you know, sometimes it's like us. You know, whenever you've worked someplace, you've done a job, you're working in the yard, you've worked in the garden, and uh, after a while, you know, that perspiration just becomes you. We don't notice it anymore. But finally, when you walk into a room with folks who are clean and they're smelling good and they see you, it's like, whoa! And you can't even tell. Because you've been working so long out there, it's just who you are right now. Everything else is just normal, who you are right now. And that's how we are with our own righteousness. Everybody else can see. And so maybe we need to give hint to what everybody else can see and say, let me search again. Let me surrender some more. Let me give myself unto the Lord some more. But I want you to understand that that life of the Spirit, according to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, that the fruit of the Spirit, what is produced in surrendered lives, I want you to know that everybody has not given themselves over to the works of the enemy. So don't fool yourselves to think that you are the only one who hears a challenge to do what's right. Oh, no. Remember in the Old Testament, the prophet Elijah thought he was the only one who was trying to fight and to serve God. He had just uh, represented God before the 850 false prophets on Mount Carmel in 1 Kings chapter 18 and chapter 19. 
He made these false prophets look good, look, look shameful, I mean. And he even had those prophets killed after he was able to show God's power. But that scripture continues. And a little while later, Elijah thought that he was the only one serving God. All right. Therefore, why should I even bother? I'm the only one that's trying to do right. Why should I bother? I'm the only one on my job that's trying to do the right thing. Why should I bother? If I'm the only one in my family that's trying to acknowledge God, why should I bother? If you can't beat them, you might as well join them. I'm here to tell you that that is not so. That you are not the only one who hears the word to live righteously, who hears the word to live by the Spirit of God, to live a life of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and the self control. I did not have to eat that second link of movie. I did not have to get that person told. I have self control because that's what's being produced in my life. Friends, you're not the only one. You're not the only one that's hearing this message, that's hearing this word. So we don't have to compromise before God and to think that no one else is trying to live for God. At least I'm doing better than so and so and so and so and so and so. No, let Christ live in you. Let Christ live in your plans. Let Christ, whatever you're, you're planning, you're looking for the school session, you're looking for family things, you're looking to do this, you're planning for this. Let Christ live in your plans. Let him live. Invite him in your plans. Invite him into those small processes. Let him live in your plans. Let him live in your talk. Oh, that's a difficult one. But as we've been mindful of that, we can let our words be words that will honor him. Let Christ live in our talk. Let Christ live in our gossip. We find out that a gospel will go away when Christ lives. It. Glory to God. Let him live. Let him live. Stop rejoicing when you're seeing people unsuccessful and people fail. Stop rejoicing in that. In that stuff. Oh, I knew they wasn't right. I knew they wasn't going to. Stop rejoicing in that. Stop rejoicing in that. Lift folk up. Lift people up. We're here to lift up one another, not to put you down, not to destroy you, but to lift you up. Okay, it wasn't a good week, but let Christ reign in you this week, yeah. one day at a time, acknowledging him. You can yeah. do it with the power of Christ in your life. Surrender to yeah. him. Don't quit. Don't give up. Yeah. Don't throw in the towel. There's much more in store for you. Today is a new day. And the sun yeah. Jesus shines brighter than he has shown in your life before. Don't give up. Don't surrender. Let Christ live in you. Let him live in your attitude. Let him live in your attitude. Let him live in your attitude. Yeah, this stank attitude. Let him live in that. Always bad. Always bad. Let him live in your attitude. Tell your parents, I love you. Yes. Don't always have an attitude before your parents, before your elders. Have an attitude of love. Oh, I know. But again, it's not our power. It's the power of Christ. It's not our power. That's the beautiful thing, that when Christ gives us new life, he doesn't depend upon our resources. He provides us with it. Tap into that surrender mind and find out that power that's available to you that Christ can live in your attitudes. He can live even in your frustrations. Live in your frustrations. And more than a cup of coffee or whatever it is, uh, let him live in the midst of those frustrations. Let him live in your service. Let him live in your service in serving him, in honoring him with joy, with gladness, with peace. Let Christ live in your parenting. Let him live in your parenting. God, I just don't have the strength and the energy to deal with these children. You don't. But he has the power. Let him live. Let him live in your parenting. 
Let him live in your family relations. Let him live. You're frustrated. You're downhearted. You're downcast. Yes, you are because you don't have what it takes. But the Lord Jesus Christ does. Let him live in your parenting, in your families. Let him live in all of your actions. Align our lives. Let's align our lives with what Christ has done for us every day. We know what he's done for us. He's loved us so much that he paid the price for our separatedness from the Father. And so for our sin, our rebellion, he's paid the price and he's provided the power to give us the oomph that we need, to give us the stamina that we need. And we're going to continue to honor him. He has saved us. And so we choose to live like we haven't saved ourselves. We haven't made us into a wonderful, righteous individual. No, we haven't. Some of us have tried. It's not working. Just give you a hint. It's not working. Everybody smells your clothes and smells your spiritual perspiration that stank before the nostrils of God. That's spiritual. Right? Smells in the nostrils of God. That's what it is. And so we can take off our garments of our lives, the weightedness and all of our experiences and all of the all of the incoming weaponry we had to deal with in our lives, the trauma in our lives, the abuse in our lives, we can take off those garments, put on garments of righteousness, garments of praise. We can take them off and we can put on those new garments. As the Apostle Paul says, Behold, all things are become new. He has a garment for us to help us in our life's rehabilitation. He has the resources there. And as we are disciples, as we grow in his word, we're understanding what he made available unto us from day one. From day one. You know, in, in general, there are some things that all of us miss in life. You know, we pass by a sign, we never noticed a sign until somebody brought it up. You know what, the sign was always there. Some things that we missed that uh, when you go to somebody's house, oh, I didn't see that. You, you missed it. But you know what? It was always there. And there's some things that we have missed in regards to heaven's best in our lives. We missed it because we were just blinded. Our attention was someplace else. Maybe our life's experience just didn't have certain things for us. We missed it. But I'm telling you, what heaven has for us, it was always there. It was always there. And when we can live our lives in that surrender state, recognizing what was always available unto us, the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the new language, the new conversations that we've had, the new feelings of our heart that's not always anguished and torn and ripped and confused by what life throws our way. It was always there for us, that newness of life that we could really find ourselves in him, put on the garments that he has for us. I know whom I believe in, the apostle says, and I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. Beloved, commit everything unto the Lord. He's for you, and he has so much in store for you. Let's not buy into uh, the lies of the enemy that everybody now lives this way. Everybody now thinks this way. No, everybody is not. Everybody is not. Everybody is not. All have not yielded themselves to the bell. We're all on a growing journey, a growing process. We're all discovering the newness of life, things that we miss. We're all discovering it more and more. And that becomes the joy of the Lord. When you can wake up in the morning, God, what have I missed? What have I missed? What have I missed around me that you have for me? I want to be excited. I want to be turned in. I want your word to show me what I have missed in my life. And we can take off some of those generational things. The little newness of God. Never doubt the power of 
Jesus Christ. He's saying about the power that's in the blood, there's power in the blood that saved us, that delivers us. And may our life's journey become one of exploring more and more of things that we have missed. I want to invite you to stand with me this morning, even as we ready ourselves for our prayer time, to seal some things in God's word, to seal some things. Again, that compromise of our life's experiences. We need to at least find someone that can help mentor us and help someone to kind of look. We're all on life's journey. None of us has it all together, okay? We're all dependent upon the righteousness of God. There are those who have not kneeled their knees to the veils of this world, to this world's systems and operations that goes by, but now everybody lives their lives based on that. It does not have to be so. So as we're seeking our identities, as we're seeking our self-confidence in life, we do so in a surrendered way unto the Lord Jesus Christ. As we pray together today, if there's one that wants to come and to gather at an altar of prayer, nothing magical, nothing mystical with anything, it's something about a step towards our surrender, a step towards identifying our great needs of, for the Lord Jesus Christ. So if anyone comes, desires to come and to spend just a moment in prayer at the altar, we would welcome them if you want to make where you are an altar. We even welcome that. But again, the times that we're living in, it becomes so kind of disheartening. It seems that everybody is living a certain way. It seems that that's just the standard. But everybody has not yielded themselves in that kind of way. Everybody has not. Everybody has not. Sometimes we live in the midst of so much hopelessness that we can't beat any minds for a joy that we've given to a downward spiral. But it doesn't have to be so. It doesn't have to be so. A life that is yielded, a life that is able to say, I know in whom I have believed in, who I am believing in, and I'm going to trust and to acknowledge that, and to align my life, and allow, allow Christ to live within me, live within all of me. Thanks be to God. And the Lord bless you. Let's pray together. Father, we know not what this coming week holds, the coming days hold, but we know for sure that at this moment of eternity, we know that we're gathered before you. Yes, Lord. And we know that you are hearing our heart's prayer. Yes. Father, you know how the Spirit has been working upon each and every life, even during these last several moments. And we just thank you and rejoice, Lord God. This whole moment, we, we, we take our focus, Lord God, off of the pain of tomorrow, yeah. the pain of living life, and just to abide in you right now, God. Yes, to yield ourselves a pressure, to, to know that none of us have obtained all that is there for, that for us, oh God. None of us, oh God. So we want more and more of your righteousness. We find more and more of your righteousness as we learn to surrender more and more. As we see more and more about ourselves that's needing to be surrendered unto you. Father, break up those parts that we're not able to see, oh God. We think, Lord God, that we just put on enough cologne and perfume to, 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 uh, to, to drown out the smelliness of our lives. Father, we don't have to realize we thank you, Lord, that we can come to a place where we can be real for you. Yes, where we yes. know you see us as we are, yes. God. That you can minister unto us. So minister unto, it, though, unto the need, Lord God, of this time and those that are gathered here, Lord God. We want to learn to allow you, Christ, to live in us. In our plans, in our conversations, our schedules, our thoughts, our attitudes, our frustrations, even our responsibilities as spouses, as husbands and wives, even in our singleness, Lord God, we want Christ to live in us. And our actions would be pleasing and acceptable unto you, Lord God. We thank you for the realness of the Apostle Paul. The realness to the point that he was the chiefest of sinners. But he spoke about an encounter that he had with Jesus Christ. May our encounter with you, Jesus, be alive and real. 
Thank you for the realness of individuals today. And I ask that by your spirit, that you would grant their desires, that you would work it to flow in them, Lord God, as you're desiring, Lord God. As you're desiring, you know the plans that you have for them. Plans to give them a hope and a future, Lord God. Plans to allow you to shine in them, Lord God. Speak healing into lives, Lord God. Healing, Lord God, into the brokenness, Lord God, that's been experienced by life's traumas and life's situations, oh God. Healing to manifest itself through our disappointments, oh God, through our own frustrations, oh God, through our own misgivings and missteps, oh God. I pray right now, Lord God, that there are those that can sense and to hear that chains are falling off in their lives, Lord God. That there's freedom that are being given. There's an acceptance, Lord God, that's being given. That there's help, Lord God, that's being available and ushered unto them, oh God. Oh, we thank you for that, Lord God. And that work that you have begun, I know that you're going to bring it to a completion because we know in whom we have believed in, oh God. And even as we spend, Lord God, the remaining hours of this day into the evening, oh Lord God, to reflect, to meditate, Lord God, to change, Lord, the voices in our head, Lord God, the voices about how much you love us and care for us, and you're working things together, Lord God, as we change the conversation in our heads, oh God, we thank you, Lord God, that you love us and that you care for us, oh Lord, that you have not come to condemn us. But that you know that we may have life, Lord God, abundant life. We receive that more and more and more. Hear our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 schedule so grateful for those of you who were uh, took part in a part of our uh, camp meeting time together and uh, what goodness and uh, mercies that we experienced and uh, we're going to keep on praising him keep on loving him and to understand more and more what he has in store for us so again good to have all of you here on today those of you who are joining us uh, online um, uh, we have Nadia's grandmother with us today, Mrs. Yeah. Tyler. So good to have you today. We welcome you. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Amen. So, so glad that you brought the Spirit of the Lord with you. Amen. Thanks be to God. We appreciate that uh, so much. Uh, it's good to have uh, Khalil back in the house with us today. I just, he's not going to want to. I'm going to ask Khalil just to stand. He's not going to want to. But uh, while we were in camp, we did, uh, you know, Camille and his basketball team from Rockaloosa went to Las Vegas and took yeah. home first place. Yeah. The tournament there in Las Vegas. 
Amen. Teams from around the nation. It was a national championship. Amen. Good job. And um, he had his escorts that were with him. Amen. 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 Blessings, blessings. I mean, summer is quickly rushing to almost a halt. But again, it's, it, it's all good. We're going to take it one day at a time. This moment is the only time that's promised to us. And so we're going to live and to experience the faithfulness of God. Even though our back to school service is in yet for two Sundays, two weeks. The 6th of August, we'll have our back to school service the first Sunday in the month of August. So we know a lot of that is just around the corner. And so we celebrate uh, that and just take it one day at a time. Wednesday night, we're back on our Zoom again. Uh, we had just a wonderful time together recapitulating our camp meeting experience this past Wednesday. And so as we come to the close of the month of July, is that time of year again? You know, sometimes you get that call from your doctor. It's time for your yearly checkup. So we have our yearly spiritual checkup that's coming out unto us this coming Wednesday. So that'll be our focus. Our yearly spiritual, or in this case, it's about every six months. And I'm glad you kind of call me every six months because we do something at the first of the year also. But just to check up where we are spiritually and our growth and our development uh, in, in Christ. And hopefully we can provide some resources that will benefit you uh, this coming um, Wednesday, Wednesday night. Um, um, it's not a surprise, but on the second Saturday of August, okay, August the 12th. You are invited to a special birthday celebration on August the 12th from 12 noon to 3 p.m. There will be the celebration of Brother Carlton Hardy's 102nd birthday. And the church is invited. You can come and go as you would uh, as you would uh, desire, please, according to your schedule. But the second Sunday is actually his birthday, 102nd birthday. Uh, I don't know how you can take that with you for the rest of your life. That you were in the presence of the grace of God, uh, just like that. So we'll be announcing that, but just wanted to do an opening announcement uh, towards that. And so other opportunities that may be listed there, I uh, want you to take note uh, of those particular opportunities. Thank you for your uh, graciousness and your continual financial support of the work here at New Life Church of God, whether you are viewing us online or whether you are live and in person with us. Again, uh, we believe that this is a good soil for you to sow your seed as you, uh, the tithes and the offering uh, that uh, that come into the house, uh, enabling ministry to go forward. We're so grateful for your continual support and for you uh, being able to find and to live and to maneuver among blessings chasing you down, running over, running you down for that. Again, as that becomes our focus so much that heaven has in store for you. So may the Lord bless you and we thank you for your continual giving and for this past month and what you have given for our scholarship fund as we ready ourselves for that distribution that will be coming out as our college students will prepare to go back to school toward the middle and latter portions, portions of the month of August. So thanks be to God. If you have something to give, again, our offering receptacle is in, our, in the back of the sanctuary as you're welcome to sow in faith, uh, just trusting and believing that the Lord has provided for you and he will bless you so very richly. All hearts blessed? Amen. 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 May you be excited. May you be enthused. May your hearts be Lightened, lightened as you go uh, from this particular place. Uh, indeed, let's keep praying one for another, and uh, we're going to see the goodness of the Lord as we continue to press forward. Indeed, we're going to stand together at this time to receive our benediction. Again, we're not leaving the presence of the Lord, but may you live this week with an expectancy as we those thoughts, those words in our minds that uh, talks about how discouraged we are about certain things, how distressed we are about maybe our health issues and concerns. As we change those words to talk about how much I know that Jesus loves me and he cares for me, 
as you go back to your home, sometimes it becomes uncomfortable places because there's always fussing and always arguing and nobody can get along and there are the slamming of doors and there are the frustrations that are giving. And may we change that particular motive. May the Lord Jesus Christ bring about a transforming power within our homes, our houses. Again, we are blessed. There are folk, there are folk who live in chaos all of their lives. We know that. God's mercy and patience is with us. May we take what we know and what we have, and may we see that lived out in such wonderful places, that our homes can be places of refuge, can be a fortress, can be a place where the love of The of God is found in that place. So may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May his face continue to shine upon you. Even as you move forward from this particular place. Again, we'll be right back here on next Sunday. But through it all, may you depend upon God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your blessings that are found in this place. And Father, we pray your blessings upon those that are gathered in this place and those that are tuned in and viewing this particular service today. Thank you for meeting our needs, Lord God. And we give a blessing unto one another. May we be empowered to rise above those things that come to trip us up and to hold us down, oh God. May we arise in confidence. May we arise in victory. We open our service by proclaiming that we have victory in Jesus. And we close it by saying the same confession, that we still have victory in yeah. Jesus. So may the Lord bless us even as we depart from one another, but never depart from his presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Amen. May the Lord bless you through the hands of us.